Welcome to the Austin School of Furniture podcast, brought to you by, well, the Austin School of Furniture. We're a fine furniture school in Austin, Texas, offering classes of all links to all woodworkers of all skill levels. Join the ASF staff as we talk furniture making, how to grow as a craftsperson, and interview incoming instructors. Thanks for listening. Alrighty. Hello, and welcome to the Austin School of Furniture podcast. This is episode three. I'm Austin Waldo. This is Michelle Myers. Hello, hello. And today we are interviewing Andrew Hunter. Hello. So thank you yeah. to, welcome to coming to the Austin School of Furniture. Welcome to the podcast. Absolutely. Welcome to everything. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we have you here, obviously, at the Austin School of Furniture for a class. What are you teaching right now? Uh, well, last weekend we taught, or I taught a uh, Japanese hand plane class where each student got a brand new hand plane from Hita Tool. And... Uh, in two days, we tuned it up and got it making shavings, mm-hmm. um, which is a full two days. Um, it's not like a Western hand plane that comes ready out of the box. Um, it takes it takes some work, um, and that's what we did. Yeah. So is that just sharpening, or what else is happening? No, it's uh, it's sort of the blacksmith gets it eighty uh, percent of the way. Um, I we flatten the back. That was sort of the first day we learned how to tap out, which is a. Um, Basically, the first thing the students have to do is hit their brand new Japanese plane with a hammer. <laughs> um, but Oof. that is the beauty of a Japanese or a laminated blade, really, um, is that you can use the soft steel um, to to shape uh, the, the hard cutting steel. Um, you sort of optimize that as opposed to having to grind the back on a, on a, on a coarse stone to get it flat. You can do a lot of that flattening with a hammer. Um, so that when you do flatten the back, it's a lot easier and there's much less material to, uh, to remove. Yeah. Can you say the uh, place that you bought it again? A uh, HEDA tool. Okay, yep. and they, do they sell them in kits? No, it, it's, uh, you basically buy the width of the blade. Oh, I see. Uh, we were all using a 54 millimeter. Um, I actually have a, I have a plane that I've, I've used to teach in other classes, and this one's actually from a Suzuki tool. Uh, both of those companies are in Berkeley, uh, and those are really sort of the only uh, companies that are dealing in Japanese tools in the United States. So I, I want to support those companies so that there are more yeah, <laughs> um, totally. um, companies dealing with Japanese tools. Um, and so I'll take the blade out. So one of the, one of the unique things about the blade is, A, that it's a laminated construction, uh, uh, hard-cutting steel laminated to a soft steel, um, but also the back of the blade is hollowed out. Um, because it is really hard steel, um, it would be difficult to flatten that back, so it's hollowed out, um, and that's that's where we use the uridashi or the tapping out to sort of keep that shape uh, as as we use the blade. Um, as you sharpen the bell, eventually you re- reach the hollow. The blade is not done, <laughs> you know. Um, you can tap out the blade to uh, bend the tip down, so that when you sharpen again. Uh, the cut goes right to the tip, yeah. uh, and in that way you sort of optimize that um, the shape, um, and it makes it for more efficient sharpening, uh, better sharpening in general. Uh, so that was the first day, uh, and once that blade is shaped flat, um, we'll fit it into the body or the die, and that's that's sort of a process of putting graphite on the back of the blade, uh, hammering it into the body, taking it back out, and seeing the high spots. Um, and again, that's the die cutter did this in Japan, but they did 80% of the work and we finish. And I that's, see. that's sort of, that's the general, um, that's what's going on with these tools is they're, we do the finish on them. Um, and that, that keeps the price down and it allows me to tune it the way I want to. Yeah. And most importantly, I feel build that relationship with the tool, <laughs> which is, uh, what I like about hand tools in, in general. Nice. Yeah. Do you have any Japanese planes? I do not. I have no Japanese tools. Shameful, I know. But, uh, <laughs> I, you know, no, I just... Do you have hand tools? That's, I that's do, my, yeah. Honestly, I was just yeah. uh, raised on Western tools, you know. How did you get started in, in Eastern tools? Um, did I, you just start from the beginning? I, I started with Western tools uh, and hand tools. I, I feel like my affinity is hand tools. And honestly, that's, that's my bottom line, is I want to promote more hand tools. Um, everywhere. Um, but I, about three years in, I, I found Toshio Date's book. Um, 
Satoshio Date's book. Um, and that just, that's what got me going. Uh, and it, it was as if it was in there already and I discovered it because when I opened up the pages and saw the tools, I said, those are my tools. Yeah, yeah it's a great <laughs> uh, and, book. And basically I have since gone to all Japanese uh, tools for the most part. But, but my bottom line is, is really sharing with people hand tools. So in your own work, you are using Japanese tools exclusively? I, yep. Uh, I, I have power tools, which I use. <clears throat> um, honestly, as much as I can, I put a power tool to it. But I don't ask my power tools for the accuracy. Um, right. And that's, that's where the hand tools come in. Uh, and especially hand planes, I don't. Um, that is my finish. I, I generally don't use sandpaper. Um, and the finished surface is off the hand plane. So, so you don't use sandpaper at all? For the most part, no. Okay. Um, wow, it's uh, it's all blades, and I, I I I love the blade. You know, that's that's yeah, <laughs> that's that's where my love is, um, and and I I have found Japanese culture to have a love of the blade, and that's that's where I feel like I've found my fit. Um, that's great. But for the most part, you know, I, I am. Everything else about me isn't necessarily. Um, you know, what I build isn't necessarily in Japanese aesthetic. Um, I'm just attracted to the hand tools. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So you, you did a, a weekend class, and right. now you're currently teaching a joinery class. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, which, so I'm a furniture maker. Um, so for the most part, what I'm teaching in the joinery class is the overall essence of Japanese woodworking, the tools, how I use them. Um, and we're doing that by creating some Japanese joinery, um, which mm -hmm. some of some they're super interesting, um, but not necessarily something I use in my furniture. Um, but we use it to learn um, Japanese methods of, uh, of of work. So that was sort of the uh, you know we we started we have I had three joints that that we did over or we're in the process um, we're we're two joints in. I started uh, with a simple. <laughs> um, um, uh, keyed, uh, mortise and tenon, uh, and today we've been working on a Kanawa joint, a scarf joint, which is a little more complicated, and then we're going to finish on Friday <laughs> with uh, the mystery joint, oh. which is a, a four-way uh, dovetail. Uh, uh, so there's, on all four mm. sides of the joint, there's a dovetail, so logic would tell you that that joint cannot go together, <laughs> um, yeah. except for the secret. Is there like a password? Is that is that what happens? <laughs> it opens up. Um, I'm curious. Show us the secret. Would you like? Would you like to know? Absolutely. Don't, as long as you don't tell anybody. Okay. Um, cool. For those who can see um, watching on YouTube, you'll see that it is the impossible joint. Uh, there's there's no sensible way for it to go together. And there's no glue lines either. No. Like I was looking for a glue no. line. Uh, so what it is is they go together at an angle. Um, that's the secret. They're able to slide, and all oh, the, man, all the dovetails cool. are preserved on all four corners, um, and they slide together <laughs> like so. Um, Is it fitted so cool. symmetrically? Like you could flip that thing around, or it only kind of goes together in one theory, way? Yes, um, it is. And and again, we use we're learning center line layout, which is which is a unique um, way of laying things out that um, Japanese carpenters use where we, we create an XY axis, a theoretical XY axis that we measure from, as mm -hmm. opposed to measuring from the sides. Um, so yes, in theory, because this was all laid out from the same center um, on each side, they could probably all go together. I have not tried. I was happy enough that I got um, it to go in one direction. Okay. <laughs> and I, yeah. I call it quits at that. Yeah. yeah. And the, the center line technique, correct me if I'm wrong, is because it was developed around working on logs, yeah, exactly. cylinders. Okay, yep. yeah, I was going to yeah. ask, is this more for timber framing? Exactly. So okay. so most of these Japanese joints, um, these concepts are for timber framing, large mm -hmm. scale, um, which I have done in the past. Um, not Japanese timber framing, but Western. Um, but for the most part, as a furniture maker, I am not necessarily using these joints in my work. I am fascinated by them, yeah. and, and I like the principles, uh, it's particularly using a centerline layout, um, that idea of creating your own X, Y axis allows you to, to leave the square and straight um, realm, which, which I feel like we're, 
um, tend to be stuck in when we use edge. Um, we tend to um, use squares off of an edge. Um, with a log, there is no square edge to use a mm -hmm. square off of, so we, we create a um, lines um, in X, Y axis um, just in snapped lines, and we always put our square, and we use a flat carpenter square without an edge, mm -hmm. um, so we use that to do the layout. And that means we can do it in a log, we can do it in a 20-foot timber that isn't square. Um, that's where it really makes the mm. most sense. But uh, to be honest, as a furniture maker working on a smaller scale, I tend to make all my materials square and straight and measure off sides. Um, yeah. I just like knowing <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that, I, that I could bring, incorporate a, uh, a stick, you know, and, yeah. and find a way to do intricate joinery with something that uh, wasn't square and straight. So, Very cool. Yeah. And have you found that the Japanese joints that you've learned over time have helped the, you know, I guess Western style joints that you're using in your pieces, the smaller joints that you're using? I guess so. It's, uh, it's more the way of working that, mm -hmm. that I really uh, appreciate. Um, and I, I like teaching with Japanese joinery. There's an interest in Japanese joinery. Um, so I feel like that draws people in and then I got them and then I can teach them about all the wonderful things that I like about, uh, Japanese woodworking. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, totally. there, there's an interest, um, whether or not I use it or not. Um, hmm. I, I, I appreciate it and, and, and use it to teach more about, uh, how to use the tools and, uh, how to, a lot of it has to do with precision. That's, that's really what I'm, I'm mm -hmm. teaching, how to, how to use hand tools precision like like i said my i have power tools but they're not the best and i don't spend a lot of time tuning them up for precision they do my rough work and my hand tools really uh that's where my precision comes mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and with a, a hand planed finish and non-sanded finish yeah. you're probably sharpening pretty often i i sharpen a lot and and I like sharpening, you know, that's <laughs> something um, might be wrong. with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is truly the mentality that I'm trying to share with people that, uh, um, sharpening is fun. It's not a chore. It, and it really, uh, mm. it not only does it get you sharper, it grounds you. Um, it's sort of, it's an opportunity to step away from a project and see it, uh, as a whole. Whereas when I'm working on a project, I get a little too focused um, so there's a, a lot, of, a lot about sharpening that I like, and on, on it's on my birthday I sharpen. <laughs> That's how right. I feel about sharpening. Wow! Uh, when I'm allowed to do anything, I sharpen. Um, cool. So it is uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've, never I've, heard I've, anybody say that before. I have fallen in love with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never. And, and, it, and it's what I like. One of the things I really like about it is it just feels endless. Every year I become a better sharpener, mm -hmm. and I'm 25 years in. Um, and I feel like I'm halfway there and understanding mm -hmm. what sharp is. And it just feels like an infinite um, goal that um, I enjoy pursuing. Mm -hmm. cool. um, but yeah, that might so be us, a little weird. <laughs> give us the, the, the brief rundown of your process. I think everybody has a different opinion on sharpening and their process. Yeah. What, what is your Andrew Hunter sharpening process? Um, sharpen often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't get dull um, and I stay sharp which in the end saves me time because I'm not making mistakes. I'm not leaving, I'm not making blowout uh, with a sharp tool. Um, so I don't have to correct that. Um, so I'm, I'm staying sharp. Um, I'm using Japanese water stones, um, thousand grit, um, 4,000, 8,000, you know, honestly, there's nothing special um, that's different than the West. <coughs> It's just doing more of it and, and, and appreciating it. Because it, to me, being sharp affects everything else I do in my woodworking. Um, and the sharper I get, the easier my woodworking gets, the more precision my woodworking uh, gets. And I, 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 that's one of the concepts I, re I really want to um, introduce to the West. Not, in, not necessarily introduce that they haven't um, experienced sharp tools, but really emphasize that it's not a chore, and it is the essence of woodworking, uh, especially with hand tools. And if, if you want to learn how to use hand tools, you have to learn how to sharpen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Truth. Yeah. Preached. Preached. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just thinking, it's like, yeah, uh, we definitely did not sharpen on, on my last birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I did a bit of a pump Yeah, that is not, a, that's yeah. not my birthday wish either. Yeah. But, yeah. 
you know, to each their own. To each their own. That yeah. might make me weird, but uh, <laughs> yeah, my tools are sharp. No worries. <laughs> Andrew, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go off topic here, off woodworking topic. Okay. In many of your bios, it says you were a former college athlete. Okay. Tell me about this. Um yeah, I I I absolutely love sports. So so in college, um well, in high school, I, I uh, played football and lacrosse. I was the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, and was recruited to play football. Um, but I'm, I'm too small <laughs> to, to make it too far. Um, so I played a year, Division three, and then transferred to University of Colorado. Cool. Um, where I did awesome. not play football. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Um, but I did uh, play lacrosse there. Okay. Awesome. Um, I did not know that. And honestly, I... Whatever cool. sport it is, I like being active, and I yeah. like using my body, uh, and that translates to my woodworking. I mm-hmm. like yeah, using my body in, uh, in in woodworking. I like being physical. Um, so nowadays, I do it. You know, it. It just it's how I relax. You know that and sharpening. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Yeah, we've been thinking about offering you know like some yoga related to woodworking. Yep. Getting like a CrossFit <laughs> program going where I'm, people help me I'm unload down. the lumber truck. Yeah. And just, yeah, you know, you picking go. boards up, you know, paid membership, that sort of thing. So we'll, I like we'll it. see. We'll see. Um, 2023 I, is going to be a big year. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. It's gonna, that's going to go really well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been known to play a little bit of beach volleyball in my day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So it's, did. it's uh, I don't know, it's being active, I mean, not only makes you healthy, and uh, but it gets all that energy out when you're in the shop, you know, yeah. and all that tension of not going over the line. Um, you know, you spike one volleyball and all that, all that, that day is Scout. gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. So, so I, 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 I will always like sports, I think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. If you could be a woodworking tool, what would you be? <laughs> I am a woodworking tool. I think it's a little more <laughs> that's obvious. True. Yeah. yeah, that's I've totally been, true. I've been called that before. So. Yeah. Well, a tool who woodworks. All right. So, Andrew, <laughs> if you were a woodworking tool, yes. which one would you be? Oh, gosh. I guess a hand flame. Yeah. I, I think it's a little bit obvious. It would, it would probably be a Japanese hand. It's much better. That one right there? <laughs> it or? might be that one. <laughs> much, better, much better are than those that your tools too? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I, 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 I have tools I travel with, and I have tools that stay at home. Mm-hmm. Um, so your babies are at home. My babies are at home. Yeah, All yeah, these yeah. are my babies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and you, my very special ones. You know, a lot of people who have seen Japanese woodworking have seen some of the Japanese shaving. Uh, is there a name for it? The shaving contest? Yep. And um, so exactly. those big planes, you have one of those, right? Well, I'm, <laughs> as, as part of uh, Kazerikai USA, I'm taking care of one. So I'm... Yeah. I'm uh, because Air Kai um, is is an organization that was first started in Japan, uh, and that's yep. that's most likely what people have seen uh, on on whatever YouTube mm-hmm. these hand planing contests, um, the thinnest shaving, full length, full width um, wins, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it gets down to two microns. I have heard of, um, which oh which <laughs> for anyone out there knows what a micron is, it's unbelievably mm-hmm. thin. Um, and it's you know that it's it's pretty crazy, but it, it, it honestly it's telling you about how you're sharpening. Mm-hmm. It's telling you about the steel. It's telling you about how your plane is set up. Um, it's all in the shaving. Mm-hmm. And and, and uh, so this Kazerikai group, which loosely translates as um, planing group, um, first started in Japan to preserve their traditional craft. Um, and I'm part of a sister chapter, the Kazerikai USA, uh, which is we've. You know, we've gotten going. I, I went to an event in 2000 um, and have been part of it since, I think, uh, 2015. So what's um, your personal record? I, when I was, so I went to Japan and, and went to a Kazerikai event and I measured at 10 microns, All right. um, which All right. I was feeling pretty good about. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, it, it did not put me in the, uh, in the, the top rank. Um, Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the whole idea of a competition, it's not about the competition. Again, it's about bringing people who want to learn about hand tools, mm-hmm. who want to learn about the blade and sharpening together. Um, and that's that's really our intent with Kez USA. Um, and I'm trying to start even these mini Kezes, uh, where I, I live in uh, uh, New York, a couple hours north of uh, the city. 
and I'm trying to, um, or we have started, um, first Friday of every month, we get together and have a Kingston Kez. Um, Kingston is the town. Cool. Um, and it's just getting people together to sharpen, to talk about hand tools, to make shavings, and to just geek out on hand tools. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like that's, that's what it takes, because as a person who loves hand tools and, and has friends who are other woodworkers who don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk about <laughs> hand tools, <laughs> it can feel a little uh, lonely. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, so getting a gang together who have the same interests um, just supports us all. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. That's why yeah. we're friends, you know. Yeah. But our, our significant yeah. others don't. Oh really like God. to come out <laughs> with us. Yeah. Like, all you guys exactly. ever talk about is woodworking. Stop That's, talking about woodworking. Exactly. I was like, you need to form a group yeah. <laughs> outside of the house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I right in understanding that those planes and competitions are not wood? Or are they wood? Uh, the, the bodies? Yeah. Um, they are. I feel like when some of the freaky deaky, uh, the, the Kez Reeks. Um, yeah. Um, will laminate um, bodies, so they're, oh, so they're more but stable, they're but it's still... Oh, okay. They have epoxy okay. around them, or...? No, just... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what they're gluing with, but uh, it, it's a glued up um, to make it more stable. Mm-hmm. Um, gotcha. I, I, yeah, totally. Again, I, I like the purity of it. I, I don't have any um, mm-hmm. um, planes like that. And is, um, I, cool. is it a rule that it has to be wood? Could it just no, be a machine or forged? I mean, I've seen all sorts. Someone... Made one out of epoxy. Someone yeah. made one out of aluminum. Huh. Um, I, yeah. No, it, <laughs> it, it can be anything that yeah. holds a blade, honestly. Okay. Um, huh. But the Japanese planes are Japanese white oak, which is not quite like our white oak. It's as if our white oak and our maple had a baby. Mm. Uh, it's a very closed mm. grain, yet flexible wood. Uh, the you know, sort of properties, yeah, properties of both. Um, yeah. So do you have to get that from those two vendors that you talked about in um, no, Berkeley? No, I, I encourage all of my students to buy from um, um, Hida and Suzuki, um, but absolutely not. It, it's it's more me trying to promote um, companies in the United States selling Japanese tools, mm-hmm. so there are more companies uh, yeah. in, in, in the United States selling Japanese well, tools. Well, I was just curious, do you know of any lumber yards that sell Japanese I don't, um, but you can order blocks from both those companies. Okay, cool. Um, and rumor has it, uh, I have not made a, a, a block out of it, but Osage Orange um, mm. is, is mm. one of our top contenders. Mm. Uh, but certainly uh, European Beach is what we have made in wooden planes out of in, in, in the West. Uh, that's a good wood. It's, it's a little softer than the Japanese white oak mm-hmm. uh, and certainly softer than the Osage. So I, I think I really like the idea of having an American wood that we can make, um, you know, cut a cut a blade into. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just haven't found it yet. Yeah. And that's I I, I want to say that it's for me it's not so much about Japan. It's more about the craft as a whole mm-hmm. and taking from any culture that has something to offer that uh, maybe hasn't been discovered. That's that's what I'm after, mm-hmm. and I see that there's so much in the Japanese culture, uh, in terms of the blade. There, a culture who loves the blade, uh, and has a woodworking culture, and always has for you know a thousand years, thousands of years, um, and and there is so much valuable information there that uh, that can help us um, yeah. in in the West. And so it's not that I want us all to sit on the floor and become Japanese carpenters. <laughs> I want to steal these good ideas, um, which frankly we had. 150 years ago, laminated blacksmith blades, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think is, is, uh, I want back, you know, and it's yeah. certainly something we had in the West, um, but uh, it, it has faded. Um, in Japan, it, it is beginning to fade, which uh, again, sort of um, gets me going where I, I want to grab more, I want to fill my pockets before I can't, because it's, yeah. I see it similar to what happened in the in the West 150 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we lost a lot of our hand tool understanding and uh, skill um, as we became industrialized. Um, in in a way, Japan is that. It's like going back into time. Um, going to Japan now, it's 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 like going back into Europe in 1850 and seeing a strong, vibrant hand tool um, craft. And, and knowing that it will not be the same in 150 years, yeah. like, 
and trying to fill my pockets with as much information as I can uh, to bring it back and share with as many people as I can. Yeah, cool. So mm-hmm. we can maintain, because I, I, it's again, my bottom line is hand tools and having that relationship with a blade uh, in the wood. Um, you know, if, if I'm using a blade wrong or I'm, you know, I, I really need to pay attention to everything. There, it's not, uh, if, if I do it wrong, the wood will tell me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As opposed to a helical planer, <laughs> um, it, it's not listening as, as well. It just does a good job. Um, so the helical planer has all the fun and not me. Mm. Um, I, I want to steal woodworking back from my machines because I love woodworking. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I want to have that relationship with the wood. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so it... If you want to get started in Japanese woodworking, do you start with the chisels? Do you start with the saws? Do you start with the hand planes? Somebody wants to get into it. They yeah. like what, what they're hearing. Yeah. Most likely you you've start? already started with the saws. Yeah. I, I, I do my least um, promoting of the saws because I feel like they have already promoted them themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. um, chisels, to be honest, um, <laughs> I still use my blue marples that I bought um, 25 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> don't tell any of my Japanese carpenter friends. Um, I, that's my way. I don't uh, replace a tool unless it's broken. Yeah. My marples, first of all, have made in England written on them. It's like the they're, they're old enough. Yeah. Um, and and uh, yes, I will. You know, I would like to have more Japanese chisels, but uh, um, so to get started, it's really um, for. For me, it was Toshio Date's book. You know, it was reading his his story, seeing the seeing the tools, um, hearing about his apprenticeship. Um, that's what that's got me going, and that inspired me enough to mm-hmm. go to a Kazerakai USA event. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's when my you know, at this event they had Japanese carpenters come in, uh, and when I say Japanese carpenters, some of the best. Um, they had a blacksmith there. Um, this was in 2001 when I went to the first one. Uh, this blacksmith has come back in the, in, in the past. Uh, he just won the Living National Treasure uh, a few years ago. So I'm, some of the best <laughs> are coming mm, to America yeah. to, help, um, to help share. And, and, it, and it just goes to show that I, I feel like the West has the ability to um, support uh, Japan's craft, mm-hmm. which, which is changing. It, it is um, young kids in Japan, um, at, you know, uh, compared to 100 years ago, are not uh, opting to sure. yeah. <laughs> to yeah. um, work in a dark, dingy uh, blacksmith shop um, their whole lives. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're moving into the city and getting a job, and yeah. Yeah. Um, which I which I get, but it but it means things will be lost. Um, and Japan knows that, and, and they are really supporting because uh, Erkai USA and people in the West to help support um, educating yeah. other people about it. Yeah. Are there any Kez USA events coming up anytime soon? Um, yes, we actually just, uh, put on the calendar, mostly just check out the website. It's, mm-hmm. uh, um, kazerakai.us, um, Kazer- yeah, kazerakai.us. And, uh, but we just had an event in California that I was at, uh, that was a one day, the pandemic shut us down for mm-hmm. a year. Um, so we will be back with a full two day event, uh, next year. I think it's next August. Cool. Um, but again, check out the website. And, mm-hmm. And you'll also be at our event, yes. the Texas Woodworking yes, Festival, absolutely. which is great. So hopefully everybody will come to that and see yep. you. I'll, I'll be there um, representing Kazerikai USA. I'll have my Kazerikai coat on, um, a happy coat. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Again, as much as I can get in front of people and share my passion for it, because I, I truly have a passion for Japanese hand tools and yeah. hand tools, uh, that the more I can get in front of people and share that passion, I feel like uh, the more... People like me who was had no idea what Japanese woodworking was until I opened a book and it changed my life, you know. So I, I know there's more people like that, like me out there, and I just want to find them. Yeah, yeah hmm. totally. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Can yeah. I ask one more question? You can ask as many questions as you yeah. want. Uh, what project are you most proud of so far in your career? Good question. Jeez. Um... <laughs> kids 
<laughs> good, uh, good answer. That, that would probably be my answer on the fly. Correct too. answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then to, get, second, to get more specific, <laughs> to get more specific, my woodworking project. <laughs> yeah, um, that was what my intent. But hey, my favorite. <laughs> it has to be one of my first ones. Um, yeah. and, and, I, and I even look back at some of my first projects and I'm surprised that I was able to do that. I, I have a credenza yeah. that I made where I, I, I'm surprised I was able to sharpen my blade well enough. Yeah. Again, mm-hmm. hand plane finish, no sanding. Um, this was when I was just learning. Um, but I feel like I had that, I had the spirit then, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, um doing it without thinking you didn't know what you didn't know yeah I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and i feel like that may have been some of my best work and the more yeah. i know the more fear i have and I the more know. it keeps me away from my best work totally i yeah. totally get that yeah you like look back on your projects and you're like that's actually pretty good yeah. <laughs> and then you go in the shop and you're like i suck yeah <laughs> so and that, yeah that keeps you from doing your best downs, work yeah. totally yeah. totally well, I'm glad you're proud of your first work. I, <laughs> I think it's been you don't feel no feel that firewood. Yeah. My, my first good Long piece, maybe gone. I should say. Okay, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm sure I built some things. That yeah, I'm still not there yet. Yeah, that were we'll practice. See. So yeah. where is that credenza now? It is in my uh, um, bedroom. Cool. And I wake That's up every morning place uh, and here. feel feel good about it. Great. Yeah. yeah. Do you? have a lot of your own furniture in your house unfortunately yes <laughs> interesting yeah the, the cobbler's uh, shoes have was it well cobb- it's, yeah, it's mostly it's uh show pieces yeah like i will yeah. build uh pieces on spec um that credenza was a spec piece um mm-hmm. and honestly people come to the show and be like that is the credenza i want mm-hmm. please make it for me and i'm like it's right here you could buy it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I understand. They want me to make something for them. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. Even if it looks like something I built in the past, um, I had them in mind while I was building it. Yeah. I totally understand. Mm-hmm. So all these show pieces um, are in my house. Mm. You know. Are you getting a lot of your clients through shows or, or how is that? How do you for, get your clients? Yeah. Um, uh, studio shows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that has always been my best way to connect with clients because it's hard to describe what I'm doing. Um, and if they come to my shop and they see me take a hand plane shaving and they see my hand tools, they understand, uh, that they're getting something different, um, that it's, that they are buying something unique. Um, and then I can really share, share what it is about, um, my work that separates it from other, you know, hand plane finish. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything until you feel it with your hands until you, Mm -hmm. um, see a hand plane take a shaving and then you're like yes i want to be part of that yeah totally. um, so that's that's always been the best uh and, and and i do shows getting out there and i try to share that um and certainly um the things i have you know my teaching the articles i've written with fine woodworking uh gets my name out there i i get a lot of woodworking woodworkers interested uh in what i'm doing yeah um and some of those woodworkers also want to buy furniture uh, which is that's my sweet spot yeah. Um, is people who sort of know enough about woodworking to understand that what I'm doing is unique and special, um, that it, uh, and are willing to pay for that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, with that, if somebody wants to find you, how do they find you? That's you're, a good question. You're on Instagram, right? <laughs> I, uh, yes, I am on Instagram, uh, Instagram, um, somewhat. I, I, I need to be better. I'm, I'm not good at getting out. Um, I will admit you're I'm, here, I'm a, you're I'm, out, you're I'm, on you, the other side of the country. <laughs> exactly. <right now. laughs> um, but then I will go back and hide in my shop for the next few months until someone drags me out again. Um, I used to have a website, uh, andrewhunterart.com. Uh, I didn't uh, love it. And then the bill came in, I didn't pay it. And then they took it away for some reason. Um, so I <laughs> that don't, happens <laughs> that happens apparently. Yeah. So I don't currently have a website, but uh, if you Google Andrew Hunter furniture, stuff comes up. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely, I'm realizing that now I just bought myself a camera, um, for the first time in a 25 year career, I should have done that first. You know, I tell students Mm. you need sharpening stones first, then you need a chisel. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling students you need a nice camera, then you need sharpening stones, then you need a chisel. Um, because, um, if you can't present your work, then it's just you and your work. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm learning that a little late, but uh, I'm at least learning. Heard. <laughs> yeah. So, I needed to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so um, yeah, 
take nice photos or at least have a friend that you can trade a piece of furniture with, which yeah. is where I got um, any of the nice photos that you've seen <laughs> are, are from a trade with a friend. Yeah. Cool. Um, but that, that only takes here about 10 years of that 25 years, the other 15, yeah. <laughs> um, it's gone. And it's so sad. One person knows that piece now. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's not doing work for me anymore. All, all that effort um, is wonderful for that one person. But uh, if I taken a photo that I could have shared it mm -hmm. with other people who could have, you know, gleaned something from it. Uh, so good camera. photographs make good <laughs> websites for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's the photograph in a sense is more important than the piece. It's because yeah. that's what people see. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. it, that's unfortunate truth, but uh, that's a truth I'm learning a little too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm learning. It All was, right. Yeah. So if you want to get a hold of Andrew Hunter, Come to the Austin School of Furniture, <laughs> take a class. Exactly. Then I'll give you his email. Yes. I, I, Bring I your card with your camera. <laughs> yeah. I, I do share uh, my email with, with students. So that's, yeah. uh, that's. But you're on Instagram, Andrew Hunter Furniture. Yeah. Uh, so yep. Andrew can, Hunter with a lowercase, whatever, slash or something. And, and uh, Un underscore? Underscore there you go. Uh, furniture. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you, you, people will find me if they want to. Yeah. And, uh, that's I, I. Yeah, I googled I, you. I tend to like to hide, <laughs> um, and and that's kind of uh, I'm coming out of a hiding um, phase of my life, and I, I want to uh, want to get out there more. All right, and share so, cool. um, and I, I I just want to say thank you, Austin, for pulling me out. Um, and, and there's <laughs> there's other people who who are just like you who uh, are doing just that. That that see, I have something to share. Uh, and they're taking a chance, you know, it's like uh, you've never had Japanese woodworking class in mm -hmm. your school and uh, you took a chance on me and I absolutely appreciate uh, mm -hmm. that. And the class is not over yet. We haven't. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're getting a little ahead you're of the curve done. there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's so far so good though. So far, <laughs> yeah. everything's been going away. So yeah. love it. Class has been great. Thank yeah. you so much for coming to the school. Well, Thank you for course. being on the podcast. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah. Great talking great. with you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. All right. Well, hopefully you'll keep watching the rest of our videos and the rest of our podcast. And of course, if you're interested in classes, check out austinschoolfurniture.com. Definitely check out Andrew if you can find him. <laughs> if you can find me. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Right. Bye-bye.